everybody we're here to talk to you a little bit about electrical safety and specifically a ground fault circuit interrupter ground fault circuit interrupter is an integral part of haskell corporation's assured grounding program what a gfci does is it protects you from electrocution in the event that your electrical circuit comes in contact with water or some other conductor that we don't mean for it to. Let's say for example that your power cord falls into a mud puddle and energizes that mud puddle. Some of the electricity leaks out of the circuit into the puddle. A ground fault circuit interrupter detects that current drain that's leaking into the puddle and breaks the circuit so you won't get electrocuted. Ray, let's show how this works. This is a GFCI. Before you use a GFCI, you should always test it. The best way to test one of these is to hook it into your source and then hook a tool to the end. And then what you want to do is push this little black button here and that is the test button. The tool should not be able to work. Then what you want to do to restart it, you push the reset button and your tool should operate properly and you're ready to go to work. And one thing that Bill said was you, you plug your GFCI into the source of power. Sometimes people think that because you've got an extension cord at the site, that's your source of power. Well, the extension cord gets its source from a wall outlet or a, a portable generator. So what you want to make sure and do is be sure that the GFCI is the first thing that is plugged into the electrical circuit, the outlet or the generator. Then you plug your extension cord or your tool into the GFCI. If you plug the GFCI into the end of an extension cord, the cord itself is not protected if there was a break in the insulation and that wire could be exposed to uh, metal or, or water. I mentioned the Assured Grounding Program. A lot of places you'll see cords that are marked with different colors of tape. We're in April, so the code for April is green and green, which you see on this cord. And if you follow the Assured Grounding Program without a GFCI, you have to go through quarterly and test every cord in your arsenal, every tool, and make sure that it has the right color coding and that it has been checked. That's a little difficult to do if you've got a lot of cords and a lot of equipment. So we're going to do a little demonstration to show you how a GFCI works. And how are we going to do that demonstration, Ray? Well, what we got in front of us is a tank full of water, and we're going to take a functioning drill, we're going to turn it on, and we're going to drop it into the water. We've got the switch wired to stay on because at Haskell we don't allow locking trigger switches, so we've taken a tie wrap and we've got this locked on, and we're going to do a demonstration that shows you how effective a GFCI is. So we're going to use this drill and drop it into water to test what will happen without the GFCI first. Okay, let me plug it in for you, Bill. So Ray, the drill's continuing to run. So what's happening with that current? Right now, the puddle of water is being energized by the electricity that's leaking out of that drill. Without a GFCI, we've got a running drill and an energized water puddle. Okay, Ray, we showed what would happen without a GFCI. Now let's show what happens when you use a GFCI correctly. All right, I'll get it started for you, Bill. Okay, down into the tank of water. Wow. Instantly shut off. So that shows you how a GFCI protects you in the event your power comes in contact with water or some other conductor that you didn't intend for. Make sure that anytime you're on a Haskell project and you're using power tools, you're using a GFCI. Thanks for watching.